Watching Fox Carolina, the six o'clock news. Child care can be difficult to find, a place that fits your schedule, safety, and the cost. New reports showing half of people in the U.S. live in an area without enough child care. Parents and providers experiencing different struggles. I started when I was 12 weeks pregnant, and my daughter's 14 months old now. So that would have been late February 2022. Finding child care has become its own job. I was excited to be pregnant with my first child and you get over that 12 week mark and then you hit the daycare, you know, phone lines and you're just getting hit with like a lot of resistance. For Susan Rotante, it meant calling 15 different daycare centers in Buncombe County. I didn't get a call back till she was 13 months old and I got one call from all 15. And even then, it was the farthest one from my home. The Center for American Progress tracking child care deserts across the country, defining a child care desert as any census area with more than 50 children, with more than three times as many children under five as licensed child care spaces. Take a look at this map showing U.S. child care deserts. Gray is for an adequate amount of child care, but orange shows its scarcity. It shows about 40% of people in both South and North Carolina are living in a child care desert. The demand is like extremely high. Um, it is very, very high. Um, we get probably 10 to 15 calls maybe a week. Um, potentially more than that, just depending on the time of the year. With just the amount of demand that I'm sure y'all are getting. Thomas sure. Compton operating four daycare centers in the upstate. I currently could fill one of the classrooms today with three families just because of the number of children they have. Um, but unfortunately, we do not have a staff member that meets the qualifications for that, so we cannot fill that. As soon as I have an open, I just go down the wait list, and if that person is still in need of child care, I do reach out to them. But the, the wait time has been been very long. What are we going to do with the string? And Courtney Johnson operating a daycare out of her home. They shake around and break the ground. Family child care have such a small ratio. For me, I can only have a max of six children. Um, and I was maxed at six children in last August. Um, and I've had the same uh, children since then. The two kinds of child care providers have differences. But with the upstate's booming growth, daycare providers say they're getting more calls from families needing help. There is limited spots. You know, we have licensed capacities, and then we have what we actually have quality child care um, room for. For Otante, the long waiting lists leading to a difficult life change. So I unfortunately was forced to quit my job. Um, even though being a stay-at-home mom was never my plan. It was hard to make that decision, uh, well, to be forced into it, really, is what it felt like. More than a year later, Rotante is able to start working again, finding in-home care. But the next hurdle is just around the corner. Right now, I'm starting to look at preschools. So I am getting on wait lists for places for two- and three-year-olds because I'm like, well, I don't want to be behind the curve. And you just heard Susan Rotante speaking about how she felt forced to leave her job. The lost earnings also costing the state and its taxpayers about $1.4 billion every year here in South Carolina. That's according to a new report released today. Tonight, State House reporter Mary Green showing us how lawmakers are now tackling the child care crisis. A new legislative committee focused on child care in South Carolina met for the first time Thursday here in Columbia. It's really a big picture scenario. There are not many people in our state who are not affected by this in some way, shape or form. Even among the lawmakers diving into this issue, Representative Neil Collins is the dad to an 18 month old. My wife, uh, she, fortunately she's a nurse and uh, her schedule is flexible um, and she's now working more third uh, shifts, third night, uh, uh, night shifts and so I'm on dad duty during the night. A report released earlier this year found nearly one in five South Carolina families have had to change jobs because of child care issues. For me, I think the biggest concern that I hear is the access. Uh, there are too few facilities, uh, so obviously that drives up costs, which also decreases the ability for families to uh, use it even if they can't access it. Lawmakers say they have wide interest in this issue, noting accessible child care is necessary for parents to work. That can improve workforce participation and grow the economy, which can affect how competitive South Carolina is. Not only can we hit potentially some workforce participation now, 
but with the right care in the first three years, we can really affect the future workforce. The new committee plans to hear from stakeholders in coming meetings and then develop potential legislation, regulation changes and other recommendations. The Department of Social Services, which oversees child care licensing and manages all state and federal child care programs, says it would like to see lawmakers remove a current requirement in state law for caregivers in licensed child care centers to have at least six months experience as a child care provider to be hired. We know that child care providers are having issues finding folks to work in child care. We've heard from providers directly that this is an issue that needs to be addressed. The committee plans to meet at least once more before the end of this year, before the entire legislature returns here in January. Reporting from the State House, I'm Mary Green.